Welcome back to Unkind TV, everyone. What are we calling this? Housewives the Retrospective? The Rony Retrospective. I like that. Wow. Hello, boys and girls. It's me, your favorite housewife, Ramona Singer. I know you're probably really bored right now because all you have is that really dumb Real Housewives of Orange County. I don't even know how many seasons it's been on right now. I think it's like season 97. Andy, shut it down now. I don't understand. It's about a train. Today, we're taking a time machine back to 2010 to a very special, amazing series of episodes called Scary Island. You may remember it's when I look the same because I'm ageless. I was really hotter than hot and I'm still hot. You'll see Luann when she had a voice that was half an octave higher and Alex McCord was still on the show. Bethany was poor and fat, pregnant with Bryn and Jill Zarin was there and so was Bobby. Kelly Ben Simone, who's a freaking lunatic, lost her mind on this trip. And Sonia still had some dignity and she wasn't farting all over the place. This was the very beginning of Luann's music career. So let's see if we can take this time machine with like Back to the Future and stop this cabaret from ever happening. Join me as we revisit Scary Island. Today will be part one, Overboard. To a certain group of people in New York, status is everything. You know how much I miss these taglines? This is worth it just for the taglines alone. I love you, Alex. Alex. Can you guess whose tagline this was? <clears throat> I never feel guilty about being privileged. <laughs> Actually, she didn't have as much as the Cookie Monster sound back then. No, she had like more. She's like a Kathleen Turner. Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> this is sad because Bethany left. New York City is my playground. And Jason is here. Oh my God. Don't you want to tell Bethany? Too bad Ramona couldn't. Yeah, Ramona didn't care about that in her what time would, machine. What would Ramona say? Wow, Bethany, it's going to be 2020. You're still going to be divorcing this guy. It's never going to end. <laughs> You're making a huge mistake, Bethany. It's going to be like herpes. Just ask Sonia. You can't get rid of that. <laughs> Jill Zarin. I run with the fabulous circle of people. She tries to like do a, like a laugh. Yeah, she's giggling through the beginning. I run with a fabulous circle of people. I run. And Bobby. Notice Ramona doesn't try to stop that tragedy from unfolding either. She's so self-centered. The only reason she wants to stop Luann is because she doesn't have to want to be forced to go to her cabaret show. That's shows. the sole reason we're yeah. doing this. <laughs> She doesn't care world. about Bobby. She doesn't care about Bethany's divorce. No, Trump winning. No, nothing. No, no we're going to save the world from cabaret. <laughs> I like making my own money. I find that an aphrodisiac. Because <laughs> I'm hotter than hot. Look at Mario in the background. He was hot. You know why we had so much hot sex? Because I make my own money. <laughs> yeah, True that's... fate. True fate. That's right. <gasps> True faith is, yeah. They sold what, like religious It was. Memorabilia. It was like a ripoff of True Religion. I know, but he, didn't he have like a, it was a ripoff of True Religion, but then he had his own company. It was a family run business that he inherited and he sold like crosses. Yeah. And they don't strike me as the religious type. I'm a Catholic girl. She always says that. I'm a nice Catholic girl. Does she? Yeah. Remember when she was mad at the end of last season about Luann being sacrilegious? With oh, her yeah, family? yeah. Oh, that's right. That's very sacrilegious. She better say a novena. <laughs> you better ask the Blessed Mother for forgiveness for that. It's really bad. The win. You're going to go back to bologna sandwiches if you eat that up. <laughs> <laughs> the lunatics tagline, which sounds like a lunatic saying, I've created a great life and I love living it. She's nuts. We'll get we'll get to her. I don't miss that bitch. I have a taste for luxury, and luxury has a taste for me. <laughs> Poor Sonia. Sonia, she's still not over the divorce. Is this her first season? I think this was Sonia's first season. Yeah, 
I have planned the most spectacular trip for these ladies, and boy, are they going to be surprised. Oh, yes, they are, Ramona. I'm, I'm, we're having my bachelorette party before the big day. So Ramona's renewing her vows. And Never that a is, good sign. No, it's actually the housewife's curse. In every single instance of housewife's vow renewal, they got a divorce. I think, well, and just in general, it's a... It's a bad omen. She picks up Sonia because they're headed off to the Virgin Islands. And Sonia was so different. So affected. Yeah. Really trying to play this She's Upper like, East oh, look side. at you. You're in your Manolo Blahniks. Oh, Ramona, it wasn't easy for me to get five days off, but this is a testament to you. And let's just be honest. I love luxury, and this is... I'm going for the luxury of it, but also because you're just such a good friend. It's like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe Jill Zarin should be there, but she's not going to be there. So let's just make something up about how we're sad she's not coming, but we're glad she's not going to be there. <laughs> That's the essence of what just yeah, went on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. This is very sentimental. So, George had a really brilliant comment before that watching Luann at this part of Scary Island is, like, wicked. It is the prequel to how she became the villain that she is today it's time to fly into the gravity i'm flying i don't i i see the commercials i was trying to sing from wicked oh my god this is this is truly the inception of cabaret oh my lord she walks into this music studio and she's like, look at your grand office. Well, if it's, 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 it's the countess. Oh, you don't have to call me countess. I'm Luann with you. Oh, well, you, you, <laughs> you, you'll always be the epitome of class and grace in my eyes. Oh, well, thank you. But call me Lou. <laughs> okay, well, the script says differently. <laughs> no, no. So... Well, I've come up with a song. What I did was I read from my book, and it says things like, money can't buy you class, and elegance can be learned, and Chris had me sing some of it in French, and so I sing it in French, and what we came up with was, money can't buy you class. I, I think you're the next Britney. I'm feeling very James Brown in here. <sighs> this is so funny. Because he's like, oh, everybody, the top artists of our time have been in here. 50 Cent. Ashanti. Ashanti. Even Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee. <laughs> Chris Young. What did we do to deserve... You know what? We have to Google him. What did we do to warrant this kind of punishment? You can never put this genie back in the bottle. Do you no. understand that, Chris? Do well, you understand the horror you unleashed? You can put this genie back in prison. Oh. She'll put herself in prison. Yeah. And then write a song about it. Thanks to you, what would her Chris. Song, what would her song about prison be? <laughs> back to jail yet again. <laughs> she would have, there would be something she about her joining a gang. Yeah. She'll start rapping do, now. Do like a, sure. <laughs> Yo. A uh, bologna sandwich, but I'm no bitch. Yeah, Ramona's a hoe. Sonia's a slut, but I'm the queen countess, bitch. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna fart. There <laughs> Sonia. I know, I'm turning it to Sonia. Yeah, I don't know who the hell I turned into Bethany. Whoa, somebody quick, get the DeLorean right now. <laughs> this is the moment. This is the moment it all began. This is when Luann became a monster. It's well, it's the producer. You're a star. So Luann, you're gonna walk out there. What is what is it? First of all, there's foreshadowing. It's creepy. She goes into the studio and she's like, "I'm feeling very James Brown," and all I could hear was "Feeling Giovanni." <gasps> I know, I know. And she goes, "Ugh, ugh." <laughs> and this guy is saying she's singing along. He's at the piano. You know, playing Money Can't Buy And her singing is atrocious. atrocious. You know? Money can't buy your class. Elegance is love. My friends. Oh, no. My friends. And the guy, Chris Young, stops <laughs> or the piano. Or the do it again. You sounded too good. Elegance is love. My friends. 
And the guy stops and he goes, you know, you know, Countess. The thing is, Countess. Yeah. The ability. Thing is, but he like he throws it away. It's, it's like, like yeah, okay, Countess uh, is yeah. Ability. I mean, I could. All, who wants to go see it? He's, subjective. He, it's very subjective. I mean, you've got uh, Mariah Carey, this crazy, incredible talent. But what you have, what you have, it's not about the ability. It's about you're a star. You're a star. I don't need to go to Carnegie Hall and see Yo Yo Ma. I want to look at you, Countess. Oh God! And you can see in He's her eyes. He's confessional. He's confessional. He's like, she's I a think Madonna. she's got. She's got tones of Madonna. These rich, sexy hues to her voice. Hey, Madonna can't sing. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm a great singer. No, but you're a star. You're a star. I've gone very Norma Desmond. <laughs> that's, that's, that. Now, I know this is what she was hearing in Miami when she was looking at her poster and going, oh, my goodness. I know she was hearing, you're a star. You're a star. Remember what Christia, it doesn't matter what Ramona Singer thinks or what Bethany thinks or what... The, the people in the rehab say, or what the bologna sandwiches, or Tom, or Sonia, or any of them. I'm a star. I am the greatest star. Of them all. <laughs> I can't believe and, it. And we're not even going to get to the mohawk. <laughs> well, this guy is, he's such a clown. Swindler. Swindler. He's a real fast talker. Yeah. Yeah, James Brown has not been in this studio. Oh, I know. Oh, James Brown has been here. Bruce Lee, probably, for some reason. Why would Bruce Lee be there? He probably, like, lived upstairs and accidentally walked in one time. Did Bruce Lee ever record a song? Maybe. I don't think so. This is a lot less of a time commitment than I thought it would be. I just come in here and sing my beautiful, velvety tunes and chris works his magic with that auto-tune business and i just spend the rest of my days with the kids i don't have any vocal coaching i'm a natural <laughs> let's go money can't buy you glass elegance is love oh yeah elegance is love oh okay uh, uh okay uh countess uh i'm gonna stop you right there countess uh yes. could you uh Maybe do it, do it again, but more with your uh, uh, natural uh, baritone. Of course. <clears throat> Money can't buy glass. Money can't buy you glass. Elegance is learned. Oh yeah. How was that, Chris? The star is born. Bethany was so pregnant and these talking heads, poor Bethany, her whole face is so swollen and you can tell she's miserable. Oh, yeah. She's like, she looks like she's auditioning to play the Godfather, like Brandon <laughs> with the con in his mouth. <laughs> I landed in St. John. <laughs> so Bethany is coming off the death of her father and mm -hmm. she's pregnant and emotional, as she says. We cut to the car ride. This is the beginning of the Kelly insanity peeking through. Ramona's got a little voiceover. We are going to have the time of all lives. I mean, I'm really happy that I brought Kelly. Ramona today thinks, what was I thinking? Oh, yeah. I had no idea that I brought a Cyclops to the Virgin <laughs> Islands. So they're in the car. Someone offers Kelly a snack. She's like, I don't eat processed foods. I love gummy bears and jelly beans. But then he's like, well, what are you talking about? But you just said you need high fructose corn syrup. Why would you eat gummy bears? She's like, well, that's fun food. She's like, they don't come off the vine. Okay, so they get there. Kelly's like, are we going shopping? And it's like, I'm going to lead the way. I've never been to a bachelorette party before. I don't know what to do. Are there going to be strippers like Vegas? Kelly? I'm out of touch with reality right now. You can see it in her eyes. That she's fading in and out of being coherent. She went to Columbia. On the Felicity Huffman scholarship. She went to jail today. It ain't so bad. <laughs> She'll get it. She should really write a song about it. Cheated on the SAT. My husband did it too. <laughs> but he's walking free. He's walking free. I'm doing time. But I'll be fine. 
Oh, yeah, I see the irony that he's in a show called Shameless, and I did a show called Desperate Housewife, but I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> she should join New York. Felicity Hoffman would be good on New York. I mean, that's pretty much all she's going to have going for her as a reality show. She could be like an Alex McCord. She's in good company. She's got Gina from OC. Yeah. Yeah, I went to the clink. Kelly. Yeah. Joe Judice. Teresa. Wow, we have a special guest today. His name's Baby Jesus. <laughs> meow. 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 Wow, Baby Jesus, do you think that I look exactly the same in 2010 as I do now? Oh. So, the ladies are boarding a yacht, and Sonia is so affected. Oh, my God. She oh. was so different here. This yacht is spectacular. It's my white knight. Ramona is my knight in white shining armor. Can't wait to see the interior of this yacht. And then she sees it. And they're picking rooms, and they're like, well, Bethany's pregnant. Bethany should be able to stay wherever she wants. She's like, I don't want to pull the pregnant card. I'll stay in any room. And all I could think of was shark room. Yep. Shark room. She did that last season. She's yep. like, I, I, I'll sleep in the shark room. I don't care. Give me the fish room. Give me the fish room. It's fine. Oh, my God. She was like this even back then. Yeah. We were talking about how different a lot of these housewives have changed. And Bethany's really the one who hasn't. Yeah. She got a little harsher, I think. I think life took its toll on her. Like the whole business with Jason. And then she had a lot happen since to this. So I feel like she got darker as a person. But she also had Bryn, so I feel like she matured a little bit. But she's still, out of all of them, I'd say the most recognizable personality-wise. Ramona's much more subdued. Sonia is acting all aristocratic. As is Miss McCord, who has to say... Well... <laughs> Anyhow, Miss McCord mentions this is her first time being on a vacation alone. Yeah, I haven't left the Upper East Side. She lives in Brooklyn. Didn't she say Upper East Side? Oh, did she? I might be mi imagining things. Oh, she, yeah, which bumps me up because I really do wish her husband, Simon, would have joined her. I miss them. Oh, she's a good person, I think. I think so, too. Was she? I think she came to New York to be an actress from Nebraska. And now she's in Australia. The ladies are having lunch on the yacht. I'm going to ring the bell. Lunch time! The ladies sit down for lunch. They're it's informal. Lunch. Yeah. So wherever. So wherever we want. We're having lunch in our bikinis. Everything tastes better on a yacht, especially 100 feet. And Kelly's like, oh, well, I'm going to go put something on because this is, I, I don't like eating in a bikini. Okay, freakazoid. <laughs> and then Ramona wanted you to know that this is proof that she was always a very good friend to Bethany. I know she can be a tiger. So, you know, Bethany could be that little tiger, but I know she's pregnant. I really want to take care of her. So I'm just, you know, I'm really Bethany, sorry. now you've had a really hard week and death is really tough because you never know what is going to happen. I mean, we're all going to die. And I'm really sorry your dad died. I'm still my and usual they do, like, self. like awkward sort of hug. Don't they? Yeah. Where's my wine? <laughs> Pina Grigio, where's the wine? And Bethany makes a little joke. She's like, I saw some grapes in the fridge. You could stomp them later. Kelly, right away. What? You're not gonna, I'm going to eat those grapes. You're not going to stomp on them. Because he's like, okay, it's called a joke. You know, grapes make wine. Just a little light humor. So she, she, can't, she, she can't let it go. Well, it's food. It's I'm food. talking about food. Make a joke about food. Why are you joking about food? There is something. She's obviously dumb, but then there's something else about it. Oh, no. She's like a manic person. Like... You know, I have a lot of manic yeah, people in my some. life and Well, they're the worst. No, it's just like it's actually not even full blown mania. It's when there's just like the mania starting and they're very quick to anger. Yeah. Over little things. Like, yeah. oh, did you leave this here? What? What are you talking about? Yeah. No. Why are you challenging me on that? That's what Kelly's reminding me of. It's like every little thing, especially from Bethany. Bethany says something. She's like, don't stop on my grapes. Well, and eat those. Oh. She has some issues with Bethany that will unfold. Oh, well, of course. We know it's coming. God. 
and apologies to baby Jesus. Apologies for, for baby Jesus and two. Here we go. So all I was trying to do in this scene was explain to Bethany that Jill Zarin attacked me because she was very upset that Bethany's father died. This was nuts. This was... So yeah, Jill was upset, as Bethany astutely points out, because she had ruined her friendship with Bethany. And then when Bethany's father died, Ramona let Jill know the next day. And Jill went on a tirade. And was like, she went crazy attacking me. And Kelly's like, she didn't go crazy attacking you. No, she didn't do that. She didn't do that. She's like, I mean, the underpinning of this is that she's just upset that Bethany's father died. And it starts to get really nuts. It's, and then it's creepy. There's Alex, something kind of creepy about it. Alex chimes in. She's like, I received a, a text message from her saying, did you know that Bethany's father died? And I found that very odd. And I didn't respond to that. And Kelly's getting more and more worked up. We're, I'm a human. I'm a human. Okay. Oh, here we go with the feelings. The things. Wow. If you don't feel, you're dead. And I'm going to go. She gets so upset over this. She calls them vile. Demented. Demented. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> disgusting. All right. I'm not a sorority girl. I don't do this. I'm a normal person. I'm normal. I'm normal. The best part is that she can't get into the boat. Well, Bethany's just like, with all due respect, they've had it up to here with Jill. And the truth is, Jill's very upset that she lost her friendship. Like, that's it. That's, that's what all they about. said. She's like, this is a whole psychoanalysis thing. You guys are going overboard. I- I'm going gonna, I- I'm gonna to go. I don't like this. I'm going to go back to my la-la land of cartwheels and good feelings and nice things. And she's trying to escape. And, like, Bethany says in her talking head that she tries to leave, like, a bird smashing into a glass window. She's like. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> What did Ramona say as she was walking out? Something like... She said, bye, sweetheart. I'm very sorry if I upset you. <laughs> you know, Ramona thinks she hasn't changed, but Ramona... Ramona now would be like, wow, what's your problem? Good, go, go. Get out. Don't come back. Done with these people. Yeah. What's your problem? Take a Xanax. Yeah. I don't know how I would react in this situation. I, I, I think I would be very uncomfortable... Because Kelly was so obviously mentally ill. Yeah. And not in the fun way. No, no. I mean... Like, like, disconnected. I mean, we're fun. Yeah. Yeah, we're mentally ill. But this was like... I mean, they're all mentally ill. This is like the type of mentally ill that they make the Joker about. Yeah. Like, she's not... Like, this is reality and Kelly's somewhere over here. She even says it. I want to be in my la-la land with cartwheels. I noticed that you dyed your hair today. Every time I do something, it's like I'm attacked. It's just like, you're disgusting. I don't do this. I'm a normal person. I have hair. Yeah, sometimes I put color in it. Wow. Psychoanalyze it. Wow. Sonia gets a talk again. I wasn't interested in the Jill negative talk at all. I was just focused on this beautiful trip. And she's wearing pearls and, and this pink fluffy... You know, it's actually quite nice to see the ladies before they all got a glam squad. The makeup is bad. Oh, oh my. Ramona's talking head eyeshadow. Pink eyeshadow. They've all got that really 2000s look going on, like with the caramel hair and the bad fake tan and the shitty makeup. Yeah. It's really funny. I miss that. Like, now they all look too dolled up all the time. All, too dolled up, yeah. But... They didn't have fake eyelashes on? No. They let their guards down now. That's one thing that's different. I don't know about that. I feel like, yes, they let their well, guards down. I guess down. I'm thinking about Sonia in particular. Most of them, no. They've all, like, they lost the big... Bethany didn't have a stick up her ass. The rest of them kind of did. The stick has long fallen out. Yeah. But along with that, like, part of what was funny about them having some dignity was how absurd it was. Okay. Now it's like the mask fell off and they're just depraved. Yeah. I kind of miss this. The way uh, Ramona handles Kelly. First of all, she's sitting there petting Bethany. You okay? Really, she does not want to be, I'm sure. My, li- just... my, my little tiger. My little baby tiger. Who has no friends. Who has no <laughs> Miserable. Kelly comes back. She had a timeout. And she's like a different person. Hey, yeah, I had a timeout. <laughs> I'm fine now. Sorry about that. And... Sonia goes, well, I have friends that I'm very loyal to. I've been accused of being too loyal. 
and loyalty Alex. Loyalty is good. Loyalty is good. Oh, I just, I can't do impressions, but I want to nail Alex for some, that didn't sound right, but I want to get Alex down. That didn't sound right either. I want to perfect an Alex impersonation for some reason. I'm you will, with as her. we go on with Scary Island, she does about, so much that you'll be able to imitate. There's something about the way she talks with her mouth. Kelly apologizes for her behavior, and Ramona goes, "That's that's all right. It's okay, sweetie. It's all right, sweetie." I don't even recognize Ramona. Now she'd be like, "Oh wow, so nice to have you back." Yeah. Wow. Wow. She go build a nest in your room. <laughs> this was such a normal scene. Bethany and Alex hanging out. They're early, and Bethany, as always, is the first one. That's where I differ from Bethany. I'm always late. Oh yeah, you're a nightmare. So Bethany's talking about the loss of her father and that she had never experienced a sick and dying person before, which to me was so odd to hear because I've seen so many of them. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like to me, that's such a foreign concept. I've been in that hospital scene so many times. I, a lot of people have it and it surprises me. Yeah. When Bethany says, she's like, I, I've never seen, she's like, you know, like knock on wood. I've never seen that. I'm like. Are you kidding me? Oh, everybody's going to eventually. This is why why we are the way we are. And oh. Alex is good. She's like, you know, life is not all hearts and flowers. Alex has come a long way since season one. And then? Well, first of all, we forgot earlier to mention the life into lemonade comment. So this is how this comes up. Alex just looks at Bethany and goes, what was that? <laughs> so and they start cracking up. They have this really genuine laugh that they share. They're like, this is you. This is you. What was that? Yeah. And she's like, I couldn't believe it. She's like, what is this? Did she go to Columbia, the country, or Columbia, the college? Because this broad did, what did she go to, Mickey Mouse University? No, she said she couldn't even get into Mickey Mouse University. She started saying at the, um, when they had their, their lunch, like, you guys, they always take the lemons and make lemonade. And it's like, that's that means you take a bad thing and make it good. No, it means you take something and make it bigger. She's like, do you mean a mountain out of a molehill? It was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. And they just can't stop laughing about it. And Bethany says, this was a gift from Jesus to me to make me laugh because she's crazy. <laughs> it is funny. It's not going to be very funny for long. No. I'm on a date with this published author, Court. Court and I met because... We're both so intelligent, and he's a published author, and... Ooh, look at this menu. Oh, they have aphrodisiacs, hmm? Oh, I want the, I want the deal closer. And, and, oh, I think I'll have the, the femme fatale. What do you think? Oh, oh, oh. I, oh well, do, do you, pl do you play tennis? Yeah, I play tennis. <laughs> do you hit the balls? Oh, I hit the balls. Oh, is that all you do? Oh, I do a lot. Oh, I'm getting very... Oh, you so... want to come to the Hamptons this weekend? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Thank you for this lovely date. Please kiss me on the cheek. <laughs> wow. Oh, thank you for this book that you gave me. Oh, first of all, self-published erotic novel. Oh, look at it. It's got a naked woman on the cover. You, you... You smart boy, this is... Look at the bar. The bar's on fire. Oh, isn't this nice? Thank you for this. This is just wonderful. <laughs> okay, Court. <laughs> just the cheek. I'd say there's chemistry between Court and I. This was such a cringy date. It was so uncomfortable. I don't... I, I, um... We sat through the whole thing like... Like touching... I'm grabbing your man boob. Um, yeah, and I'm, yeah, okay. <laughs> he keeps talking to her, but like, he's darting his tongue in and out of his mouth. It's a little bit like Heath Leather, Heath, yes. Heath Ledger's Joker, like a pickpocket. Oh, that sound! Stop Is it! Is my tongue like green and gray? No. Is it like a normal color? What kind of question is that? My tongue is sometimes gray. Okay, why is that? What have you been licking? Uh, nothing. You know what really made me laugh? Hello, Anne, as always, is like, well, after the few months I've had, I needed this. It's like, oh, Lou, if only you knew what was to come. This is before she was a... Convict. A convict. 
It was interesting because her body language... She was such a phony. But her body language said, I don't like you. And yet she kept saying we have chemistry. But and then like, in the talking head, she says she has chemistry. What was that about? That was disgusting. He is disgusting. Well, back to the island. Quick little snorkeling trip. Sonia didn't want to jump in the ocean. Why would I ruin my good hair day for She this would trip? be the first one to jump in now. With no bathing suit yeah. and then start making out with Ramona. Yeah. yeah. Ramona. I farted. <laughs> yeah, the bubbles are coming yeah. up in the ocean. <laughs> Ramona goes in the water and she's like, okay, I didn't see anything. There's no fish. Okay, well, first of all, she had a noodle because I guess she can't she swim. She doesn't swim. Yeah, remember? That's why she got all those lessons this year. Remember she was oh, trying to right. molest yeah. the swimming oh, instructor? Yeah, she she's saw like, no I, fish. I could do brush stroke. That's right. I could watch them snorkeling all day. I know. I want a PBS documentary narrated by Ramona Singer. You know, yeah. I go to sleep watching those because yeah. they're very peaceful. Yeah. I was watching one about some guy who has an octopus living in his living room to study them, and I was picturing Ramona narrating it. Wow, so this lunatic took an octopus to put in his house. <gasps> Why don't you just get a dog? Martha, we should do something like that. Get an octopus? No, have 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 you narrate like random things as Ramona? Do Bob Ross as Ramona? Yeah, Bob Ross as Ramona. Or... Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa! This was a beautiful painting. It was a farce. Why are you putting white things all over it? Why are you gotta ruin it? This guy's nuts. Somebody cut his hair. Why does this guy have an afro? What's wrong with him? Why is he feeding baby squirrels? Show me the painting. <laughs> I remember Ramona as a child watching Mister Rogers frustrated. Yeah. Why are you changing his shoes? <laughs> Who's at the door now? Why do you have so many guests? It's two in the afternoon. Take a nap. Why is everybody ringing your bell? Imagine Arthur. Arthur, oh. Wait, I don't understand. Why does he have headphones on the side of his face when his ears are up here? I don't understand. I thought he was an aardvark. What's Buffy? <laughs> You're just getting... Very frustrated, turning off <laughs> the everything. TV. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's, stupid! What's this binky guy? Why is he ten feet tall? What grade are they in? Oh, I love Hey Arnold. Whoa, Hey Arnold, Hey Arnold, tell your friend Helga to get her eyebrows done. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, SpongeBob, what's going on here? Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why does Mister Krabs have a whale for a daughter? Whoa, whoa. How did a crab? What did a crab fuck a whale? <laughs> Mr. Krabs is a little crab, and his daughter is this two-ton size orca. I don't understand. Imagine Ramona losing her virginity. It's like senior year of high school. The girls are all talking the next day. Yeah, I was out with Bobby. You know, he punched my V-card. Okay, so, all right, I lost my virginity too, but I don't understand, girls. There was no cherry. They're supposed to pop the cherry. Wasn't there? Nothing happened. (gasps) It was like two minutes. That was it. I was bored. This is what they told me I was going to go to hell for? <laughs> I didn't even get a cherry. It seems yet again like, oh, everything's all right. Everything's copacetic, right? They're sitting down. Ramona's like, okay, so you're going to sit here. Just slide right in. You're going to go all the way over there, Kelly, where you're not anywhere near Bethany. And Bethany <laughs> makes a joke out of it. And he's like, I think we've been separated, right, Kelly? You and me, like in school, right? So we don't start in trouble. You got to make a joke out of it, right? She's like, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. Sign seating. <laughs> So we're having a serious conversation. Bethany's talking about how it was really hurtful that her father told her he had had a full life. He's on his deathbed, but it was without her. And that was a terrible thing. And Sonia's very sympathetic to that. She's like, oh my God, how could you say that? And he's like, you have to accept like that's his moment. That's what he had for him. It was a full life. And you got to accept who he was to you. And Bethany's like, so a terrible, horrible human being. <laughs> And she's like, well, that, that was his thing. And Sonia's like, no, no, no. You do not tell your child that you had a full life without them. No. How could you say that to this child? And they show Bethany. And Kelly's like, in the moment, that's that's what he, you know, a lot of people, you're not alone in that, Bethany. Like, this is a very common thing. Like, a lot of people feel this way. A lot you're of people so do right that. You're so right about the mania. It's total. She's not making any sense. She's <laughs> not making any sense to me whatsoever. And every time they try to, like, explain to her that, she's off the mark she's insistent that she's right in whatever point she thinks she's making and that nobody else knows what she's trying to say you know like bethany is saying to her don't have a child then if you want to have a full life that doesn't include your child why have a child 
and Kelly just keeps going back to it, but that was that was what he wanted. That was, that was his thing. Yeah. Yeah. Ben, oh, who comes flying in? Hi! So, oh, I just met the owner of Hooters. He's got a great yacht, and I just had like a lot of Pinot Grigio. He's a really nice guy. So I asked him, can I have my girlfriend's over? And he said, yeah, because I'm hot. <laughs> so then they start talking about one night stands, and they're all joking, and Sonia and her talking, goes, they all think I'm Dr. Ruth. Because it always comes back to sex. But Sonia is kind of teasing Kelly because she's like, you've never had a one night stand. No wonder you're so uptight. You never get laid. And they're all saying they've had one night stands. And they're like, why would you want to die not ever having had a one night stand? And Kelly goes, I have integrity. I don't want to sleep with a lot of people. Okay, I don't want to bring home diseases. I'm not into sleeping with all of America. Uh And she says, I'm from the Midwest. But I was like, oh, don't tell me the Midwest. And she holds up like the Hooters calendar. She's like, these are all girls Michigan. from Michigan. Okay? They're all hitting it. Come on, Kelly. I mean, you're full of it on that. So I was like, I don't sleep with anyone. I sleep with the one person I'm with. That's disgusting. She's so appalled. It's bizarre. And then Sonia talks about how she posed for something when she was pregnant because she had nice boobs. I don't know how Bethany's been so calm through this, by the way. I would have snapped when... She just lost her father. Her father was this abusive monster. Yeah. And this Kelly, but I guess if I saw how Kelly was acting, I wouldn't engage. No, exactly. Then that she's looking at her like, yeah, Bethany. She, I mean, she says she's she's humored by it at the moment. I don't think she's humored now. I think they're seeing this is oh, like no. not stopping. No. This is not like a bad moment. No, this things is are about to blow. Things are about to blow. But. Sonia starts crying because Bethany's like, you look great. You still look amazing. She's like, do I? My self-esteem is so bad. It's sad to see this because Sonia still, we know that it's all these years later and she's not over what happened with her, her husband. She's still the Morgan letters. My mother's was that way. She never got over her divorce. Did she wear your family crest? (laughs) No, does Sonia have a family crest? Yeah. Oh, on her shoes. That's right. Dorinda flipped out. It's you know I will say though, as much as I love early Roni, there's no Dorinda. It is a little empty without Dorinda. Oh, I love. Imagine that. how Dorinda would have reacted to all this. To Kelly, she would have pushed Kelly overboard. Kelly, what, what, what are you talking about? The squirrels not making any sense. Clip. <laughs> she would have Kelly, pushed her. You over. and your clip. You're demented. Don't don't put clip in my face. You're threatening my life. <laughs> that she's that's oh, okay. John Medestian, get me out of this island right now. <laughs> they Medef broke up. Paulette. They, they broke up. Yeah, oh, they didn't break up. She'll always be with John. They're on a little, you know. She probably got mad at him for something. Okay, well, I'm going to take my dry clean and somewhere else, John Medestian. 20 minutes later, come on, Dorinda. <laughs> All right. Dorinda. All right, John, you know, just don't come near me. So, Sonia's having a moment with Bethany, and she goes, you know what I've always loved about you, Bethany, that... You're a survivor. You're never a victim. You're a survivor. I really respect that about you. Why do we have to have these labels? Everything. Survivor, victim. Why can't we just be in the moment? She's like, because Kelly, that's something I I just admire about Bethany. And then she's like, but Bethany, you're like not a nice person. Like Bethany loves to be the victim. Bethany wants to feel like, you know, the whole world feels bad for her because she wants to feel better about herself. Like you're a bad person. I'm a good person. Okay, when did I ever say that? This is so like experiences I've had with manic people. Really? Oh my God. It's like you can't, you're like not even saying anything and they're just getting so like, it, she just attacked her. It She's was... like, when did I say that? She's like, the first time I met you, you're like, I'm a yes person, you're a no person and you maligned me and my kids in the press and you're a vindictive, malicious, disgusting, horrible person, Bethany. She's like, when did I ever say anything about you in the press? You really need to let this go. And she's like, you need to let it go. She's like, let what go. I haven't brought anything up. I don't know if you're a cook or a chef. Yeah. She's like, you know, it's like creepy. You're just, you yeah, really creep me out, Bethany. <laughs> I don't know if you're a cook or a chef. She's like, I went to culinary school, you moron. She's like, I don't know who you went with. It's really, it's creepy. It's just creepy. This uh, is weird. And then Sonia tries to reel it in talking about sex again. She's just trying to make a joke, I guess. Yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. oh, well, you know, I don't know. We were talking about sex a minute ago. And Kelly's like, well, I'm not a hoe bag like Bethany. I'm not sleeping around America because I have integrity. I don't do that. I mean, you just said, like, you think it's appropriate to have one night stands <laughs> and, you know, sleep your way around America. I don't do things like that. But Bethany, you, you have a real problem. You're vindictive and malicious and creepy and scary and a bad person. Has there ever been a housewife has not... I mean, yes, there has. I'm... I I think this was, this was the only real... Nut job. This is bad. Like, Bethany didn't do anything. I've forgotten all about Kelly Ben Simone. Bethany didn't do anything. She's just sitting there. She's like, when did I? 
I know. I loved how calm she was. And then if she gets up, I mean, you know, I'm going. All I'm, right, there's a lot of problems here. Yeah, you have a lot of problems, Bethany. You have a lot of problems. I'm going to go where the normal people are. Yeah, on the Hooters boat. <laughs> and then in her talking head, Kelly's like, I called her a hoe bag. <laughs> She's like, why are you so obsessed with my life? You seem to have a lot of information about my life. I know. She's obsessed with Bethany. She's obsessed. Is this her first season? No. She was obsessed with that. I remember like saying Bethany was a cook and not a chef. Oh, she said that frequently? This was a thing for her. Ramona's having a grand old time with this owner of Hooters. The guy's like, are you sure you want to read your vow? She's like, what? Because I'm so hot. Let me tell you something. I look good. And it's such a, such a compliment because you're surrounded by beautiful women that you think I'm amazing. And you know what? Me and my husband, 17 years later, we still really love each other. You know, I'm still hot for him. Still hot for him. She says it like this close I to know. the guy. And I love how she finishes it with a... Yeah. Still hot for him. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bethany appears, because I mean Ramona is three sheets to the wind. But he's like, I'm sorry, I, I got it. I I want the buzz out of your veins. Okay. Oh, hello, Mr. Owner of Hooters. Look, I came prepared. I'm pregnant with my big pregnant tits. Hello. Yeah. Okay. It was just Mach five on the other boat right now. This is crazy. This is insanity. She's screaming at me. I don't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, Kelly's appearing with Sonya. She's like, You tried to ditch us, and all I hear is Ramona. She came in the fucking boat. <laughs> So after Kelly accuses Bethany of maligning her and her children in the press and all that, Ramona is so drunk. And they're and now everybody's on the hooters bench to say, I will just shut her down. I will shut her down. Sh shut her down. Let me, hey, Kelly, 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 I need you to be peaceful, all right? So I don't need to stress my stomach, okay? I just want turtle time. Turtle time. And Sonia's drunk. She's like, we're going to see the hot <laughs> the hooter <laughs> girls. Where do you have hooters? The Hooter girls. They're right there. They're oh. beautiful girls right there. That's what Kelly's saying. Kelly's like, look, there's one right there. And she keeps saying, I'm I'm peaceful. And she's like, Ramona, shh, shh. She's like, just, shh. no. She has, she has something to do with Bethany. You know what? Let her live in her delusional Kelly world. Okay? We're a turtle time. Then they did this dancing. It's Alex, Bethany, and Ramona dancing with this colorful light. And it's just, I could watch that for hours. Yeah. These weird, like, it's the best time I've had with girlfriends ever. And then Sonia's drunk, jumping in Kelly's bed. And she keeps Poor saying... Poor Sonia. Oh, Kelly said, tell me a story. Yeah, Sonia keeps going, you, this room smells like cat piss. And she's like, tell me a story. And then Sonia says that like four times. And I've, I've heard people say about that, that they thought it was some drugs Kelly was doing that smelled like cat piss. I don't think she's on drugs. I really don't. I think this is full-blown mania. And as you know, the follow-up to this episode was when she had a complete paranoid meltdown. Yeah. Calling Jill. Bethany's trying to kill me. That was part one. That was a lot of fun. Trip down memory lane. And we will have part two out shortly. Boys and girls, soon we're going to show you what happened. And this is the moment that I'm going to get in the DeLorean. Stop the show. Because this trip could have been saved if I had never let Kelly come. And if I never reviewed, renewed my vows. If I hadn't renewed my vows, I should have been with that guy from Hooters. So I'm going to go back in time and I'm going to marry the owner of Hooters. Get rid of Maria. She would in a heartbeat. She would. We love you.